This is Apollo Control at 52 hours, 57 minutes. Apollo 10 is 173,614 nautical miles from the Earth, traveling at a velocity of 3,429 feet per second. John Young and Charlie Duke is back on the Capcom console. Dine Isley is still at the console, too. here that we can uh, read up to you uh, if you'd like to uh, uh, listen to it. Uh, as far as why it's not working, uh, we got uh, no ideas uh, other than just reading this procedure to you. Uh, we'd like to see it on TV when the time comes. To, uh, uh, I don't know whether that'll help us or not, but watch it twirl it and see what happens, and maybe somebody will have a smart idea at that time. Uh, right now, all we got to offer is a uh, procedure that we can read up. Over. Okay, but why don't you do that? See if that's what we're doing. Maybe that's why it's not working. Okay, uh, here we go. It says, uh, step one is fill the bag to approximately one half full of water using a water dispenser. You did that. Okay. You did that. <laughs> I copy you did that. Uh, second step, squeeze the bag. Yes, sir. Okay, squeeze the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Stand by. Okay, uh, second step, uh, squeeze the bag at the valve end to force the water into the opposite end of the bag. This will shorten the, the time task of collecting the gas during the spinning operation. Okay, third step, using the handle, spin the bag until separation is accomplished. Now, this operation is to cause the gas to be collected in the valve end of the bag and the water at the opposite end. Number four. 
is pinch off or fall across center seam to maintain the separation of gas and water. Okay, then you open the probe valve and bleed the gas off. And uh, then close the valve and they say that ought to do it. Over. That's a great theory there. We give you a real time evaluation right now, Charlie. Okay, uh, we can't wait for the TV. Uh, that's all we, the only help we got uh, for the whole thing. Over. Just wait for the TV, Charlie. Charlie, nope. you love it, babe. You love it. Defies the laws of physics, I'm huh? I'm going to wait. Spin it till the... Go ahead. Spin it till the, wa till the air bubble... Spin it till the air bubble goes to the bottom and then suck the water out around the bubble. Roger, we got <laughs> That was Gene Cernan. Try it, it works. I don't know about you guys. Hey, did, did you guys try just using a, one of the plain uh, fruit juice bags to, to, to separate it out? How Did you ever try that? Yeah, and uh, Don, the water stays with the air. The bubbles condensed from a thousand bubbles into one, one or two big bubbles, but that's all she writes. You can't get it out. <laughs> it's not clear how you get rid of the bubble. Once you get the big bubble, you end up drinking it along with the water. Like I told Charlie, the, the valve's on the wrong end. I made sure I'm going to spin the other end. So would you believe that air is heavier than water? That's my theory. Roger, maybe we've discovered something here. It's all relative. That may be that the surface tension on the inside of that bag is enough to keep the water from flowing through that constriction very well. Well, at the end of the centrifuge turns, the big bubble is right in the bottom, quite a ways away from uh, constriction. Uh, right here. It, it yeah. won't condense all the bubbles in the water too big. Yeah. Looks like maybe the swing handle's on the wrong end of the bag, huh? The swing handle's on the right end, but the valve's on the wrong end. Well, whichever. Yeah. It's a very interesting thing to study these bubbles in this water. Right. Coast is clear and the southwest is all clear. 
Uh, Roger, Ken, uh, we're looking at a weather map uh, that was just brought in, and we, we cast our vote with you. Uh, you know, uh, the clouds are over Oklahoma, and uh, your description is uh, excellent. It, it uh, follows a, uh, there's a low pressure up in uh, uh, the very far north, uh, trending from the Great Lakes northeastward uh, into, uh, uh, and from, oh, I guess it's up around the, uh, uh, almost to Greenland, it looks like here. Uh, and from there, the low pressure weather system with the front comes down into the United States and touches the panhandle of Texas and then goes back on up into uh, Canada again, pointing towards uh, Alaska. And there's a band of clouds associated with that on this map. So your description is uh, very accurate. Yeah, I, I, and I think you'll see that big, uh, big swirl of clouds Tom was talking about up Alaska way. Roger. But there's you know, a... Tom, you talk about the... Uh, Charlie, Tom, well, you asked Tom about the uh, dense vegetation in South America. But if you look at, at the United States, the, the Mexican and greater American deserts are that oranges, brown, as he described them. But when you look into the, uh, into the Midwest and into the East, you go to the uh, greenish brown. It's not the bright orange brown. It's a darker, more subdued... Uh, Brown, maybe with the subtle hints of uh, dark green in it. Uh, Roger, we copy that. Uh, it looks like uh, this uh, cloud system out uh, in in the Pacific is uh, associated with a, another low pressure system uh, that's sitting uh, probably north of Hawaii at about uh, 40 degrees latitude. It's uh, located uh, about 150 degrees west. So uh, that's probably what's giving us the cloud pattern up off of uh, Alaska. That's the firm. That's going to be very easy to see. Okay, we're all set. And again, the San Joaquin Valley. San Joaquin Valley looks like uh, someone took a big spoon, and it seems to be the one thing at least that, that I, I'm able to pick out very easily every time we take a look at the state. Looks like someone took a big spoon and just carved it right out of the coast. Roger. Uh, Ken, uh, through the monocular, or through the sextant, were you able to uh, uh, distinguish uh, the uh, features around, say, the uh, San Francisco Bay Area? Let me take a look, Charlie. That's Gene Cernan giving the descriptions. There's lots of features down there. I sure ought to be able to distinguish some. Okay. Charlie, it, it, it sort of semi, appears semi-clouded up north of the Apollo of the Coast, uh, past the San Joaquin Valley, and I can't really see anything that I could call San Francisco Bay from here. Okay, Roger, it's probably some uh, haze. Uh, is it pretty hazy out on the coast there, up along the, uh, the California coast, uh, north of the San Joaquin? Hey, you We've got some clouds just off the west coast of California uh, that seem like they come just short of the coastline. Roger, we copy. Charlie, if I hold this monocular uh, still enough, I, I can distinguish features up there in the coastline up around the San Francisco area. Okay, Roger, Daniel, copy. And I'll tell you, if we had an apple to drop it, it'd fall right on Houston from where we are, right smack underneath us, right in the center of the world. Roger. We're looking forward to this uh, TV transmission here. Okay, I wanted to ask you about that, Charlie. Uh, uh, were they planning to go live with it at all in the hour, or could we turn it on earlier, or, or what do you want? Uh, stand by. We're seeing if uh, Goldstone is configured for uh, live. Uh, I think we're... Con uh, stand by. Uh, Goldstone's ready. We're talking to PAL right now. We're standing by for a TV feed now. Hello, 
Apollo 10, uh, Houston, uh, the networks uh, and the uh, Gold Star is all configured. Uh, you can turn on the tube. Okay, we'll get it out here and then go ahead with it. Apollo 10 is approaching 175,000 miles as it prepares uh, for this television transmission. We're showing 174,754,000 nautical miles. Velocity 3,406 feet per second. We'll stand by for the TV, which should be coming up shortly. Hello, Houston. Uh, this is Apollo 10. You ought to be uh, receiving something now. Uh, stand by. It's not coming in here yet. Okay, we're just starting. Roger, will it be exterior shots, uh, Jim? Negative, we'll start interior right away and then take you outside. Roger. And then we'll bring you back inside. But we'll start inside, take you outside, and then bring you inside for the water bag. Roger. Uh, Roger, we will. Uh, the networks and all are configured for this, so uh, we're, we're standing by. Let us know when you get in the pick, Charlie. Roger, we uh, sure will. Uh, Ecom's is saying we got a 90-second warm-up on that uh, transmitter, so it might take just a little bit longer. Okay, we got the black and white coming in now. The black and white just came in uh, with okay, the air. Let us know when you okay. Let us know when you get color. Okay, we're seeing your uh, your patch now in black and white. Be about just a few more seconds. Color coming now. We just got the color uh, uh, ten in the. Uh, on the, on the Vidicon here, and it, uh, it's uh, looking real good. Maybe a little bit of focus, uh, but the colors are good, and uh, it's a nice, simple little patch we see. This is a peacock of Apollo 10. Roger. And we'd like to say hello from the five of us, if we may. Roger. Okay, you want me to be a straight man on that question and ask you? Stand by one. Okay. Negative, stand by one. Got a little uh, technical difficulties here. Uh, we're still getting the color, uh, Tim. Like said, here's a low from the... Okay, go ahead, like Dutch. Said, here's a low from the five of us on... Here's a low from the five of us on Apollo 10. Uh, here's Tom Stafford. Uh, he's a beautiful Tom Stafford there. He's in living color. John Young. Uh, we got John. Uh, he's a little dark down in there with his lights not on him, but uh, we can tell it's John with his uh, chin strap loose. And, you, and yours truly, Gene Cernan. Roger, we got you, Gene. The sun is uh, pretty bright. Yes, sir. The sun is pretty bright coming back out. Uh, now you're coming in better. Uh, we see you slipping down in the LED now. Okay. 
Okay, that's the three of us, and here's the other two on Apollo 10. Your friendly Charlie Brown and our ever-loving companion Snoopy. Right, uh, we got it coming in now. Uh, colors on uh, uh, Charlie Brown and uh, Snoopy a little dark. Uh, if you could get a little bit more light on them, it'd uh, be fine, but we can uh, recognize your characters. They look pretty happy up there. How's that? That's fine. Left a little dark on the, on the color. Could you stop it open a little bit more? Wait a minute. Uh, okay, that's fine now. There you go. The red and the, the background on the uh, cars are coming in fine. The, uh, we're washing out a little bit on the uh, the white uh, uh, of the uh, Charlie Brown's coat and Snoop's face. Okay, now you know that there's five of us up here. We'd like to take you outside and show you what the five of us are looking at. Roger. Okay, we got the uh, big earth in uh, color. It looks like about a half earth now to us. Uh, it's uh, a beautiful uh, uh, blue. We see the, the tremendous cloud uh, coverage that you were uh, talking about uh, throughout the day, Ten. Oh, okay, Charlie, uh, you're looking at uh, at the world right side up as we know it. Uh, the Gulf of Mexico goes uh, or, uh, Mexico goes down and to the right of the picture uh, towards the Terminator. South America is in the uh, lower right-hand corner of the picture on the Terminator. Uh, you can look up uh, right smack in the center of the whole picture. Uh, if you can make out Mexico, is uh, is Houston uh, right on the Gulf. And in North America goes up to about the 11 o'clock position on your picture. Uh, Roger, uh, we uh, copy. Uh, we see uh, primarily the, uh, the bl just the blues of the ocean and uh, uh, the uh, whites of the clouds. Uh, we have a uh, the cloud patterns are uh, pretty evident. Uh, uh, agree quite real closely with the weather map I have. Uh, it's pretty difficult to pick out the land masses here, though. I must admit that uh, we see one uh, brownish area, which. Uh, appears to be in the American desert, about the uh, uh, center of the uh, of the globe right now. Yeah, Charlie, that, that's Mexico and into the southwestern United States right there, and uh, Baja California is on the left of that, and uh, the right-hand edge happens to be the Gulf of Mexico. If you can follow it at all up, you'll follow it right to Houston, and uh, that's New Orleans. Uh, Roger, it's uh, awful hard to ascertain the difference. Hey, Charlie, it's hard to ascertain between the uh, uh, water down there in the Gulf and the uh, landmass because uh, the whole east of the United States looks a greenish brown versus water. Uh, Roger, uh, that, that uh, big, uh, helps us out here to, to locate ourselves, at least for me, uh, Ken. Uh, I, I think I see where you're talking about now. We have uh, one section of clouds that looks like it's almost a circular area, a clear area, and then the clouds that uh, appear to come out of, uh, of uh, South and Central America, swing out into the, uh, into the, uh, the Pacific. And in the center of that, it looks like a clear area, which I'm saying is the, uh, the southern part of the uh, United States from Mexico uh, along the Gulf Coast. Is that correct? That, that's it, Charlie. The Gulf of Mexico is right smack in the center, uh, up and down, uh, of, the, uh, of the world. Uh, right, if you follow the Terminator down and went halfway and then went about halfway from there, Toward the uh, rounder part of the Earth, you'll find the Gulf of Mexico and that, that brown uh, area you're, you're looking at, being Mexico in the southeastern United States. It's Houston right smack in the center of that clear area. 
Uh, Roger, uh, it appears... Clear area it goes from us. Uh, that clear area goes from Central America right on up into the States. Uh, Roger, we copy. It appears that uh, the uh, land masses are washing out uh, uh, just about as much as the clouds. Uh, could you open it up a couple of stops and then stop it down fast so we can uh, maybe get a little bit, a second or two of sharper definition? Okay, let us know when it's a little better. Okay, it, it was a little bit, there we go, if you can hold that, but I think it over, uh, that's good right there, it's a lot better, 10. Okay. Charlie, it, uh, we, we're full zoomed on you, and it's, it's even hard for us to make out things with the naked eye unless we know where they are, so I imagine it's going to be difficult for you. All right, Jerry. Okay, Charlie, the total globe that you see there is bigger than what uh, we actually see since we have the zoom lens on it. It's probably about one and a quarter times as big as we see it. Copy, Ken. Uh, we're, as I said earlier, we're primarily getting the... Uh, the globe on a, a, a on a, 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 a just a black or a background, and uh, we see the whites of the clouds and the uh, blues of the seas, uh, with occasional uh, glimpse of what I make out as uh, as the land masses and the brownish. But uh, it's really difficult for uh, uh, an untrained eye to uh, to pick out uh, the exact land masses. We're sitting in here with a a, a the. Uh, the impad, the impad book that uh, we've got it to show the uh, the various sizes, and uh, with this diagram, uh, it's a it's a, a big help. What you're saying, Charlie, is we're just too far away to give you a good picture. Boy, you sure are a long way away. I think what it is, uh, King, is the uh, land masses and the clouds tend to wash out, and it's a little hard to uh, discern the difference, but uh, looks like we can pick out the shapes of uh, Yucatan and Florida and Cuba and the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Charlie, let me ask, do you see the, uh, do you see the area you said was a clear area, and you think you can pick up Mexico there? Roger. Okay, if you follow up what you might think is the Gulf of Mexico there and then uh, go straight north, you'll see a little bit of V in the clouds. And that one going off to the right, that little thin sliver going to the right, uh, is the one I've been mentioning all day that goes from Indiana on through the north uh, east part of the country. And then that bigger blob that forms the left-hand side of the V uh, is over the uh, north central United States. And then right smack in the center of the V is Lake Superior and Lake Michigan. Uh, Roger, that's a good description, uh, Ten. Uh, we, uh, uh, clears it up for me anyway. Uh, I can uh, see what you're talking about now. And then way up on the upper left hand, maybe about 10 o'clock on the globe, uh, you'll see a funny cloud pattern that sort of looks like a sea serpent of some sort uh, with his beak uh, pointing to the right. Uh, that's that cloud pattern that Tom was referring to up in the Alaska area. Uh, Roger, that's a... Uh, 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 no, nearly apparent to us, uh, when you stop it down, we can uh, see that pattern. Uh, uh, some of the time, though, it's washed out due to the tremendous uh, cloud coverage in that area. There it is, Charlie. That ought to be good. Okay, it just came in on the black and white. We'll see it in just a second. Okay, now we see what you're talking about. Looks like an inverted U, almost. There you are, Right, now you ought to be able to see that, uh, that V area I was talking about better, too. Uh, uh, Roger, uh, it's, uh, it's coming in a lot better, Gene. Okay, if uh, you got a pretty good view of the outside, uh, we'll take you back inside for one last quick minute. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Dan, for that view. Uh, it's uh, real good. Uh, we'll be standing by for the water bag trick. Okay, we'll take you back inside here now. I'll take her.
Well, I guess that's the message to the kiddies in the country. If they can't get their homework right side up to upside down, they might be able to absorb more that way. Roger. Uh, John's trying to hog a picture there, Gene. Uh, there you go. You pushed him out of the way. You got uh, you got center stage now. What a ham. You want to see me push? Watch what happens. That's called one finger power. Right. Okay, this is uh, Apollo 10 signing off. We'll give you one more picture of the Earth here and call it a day. Oh, hold on, we want to show you the bag, too. All right, we appreciate that. Well, the 
air gets down there when you stop spinning, the big bubble is at the bottom. Right, we copy. Okay, this is Apollo 10. We'll take you outside for one last look at the Earth and sign off. Roger, thank you very much. Okay, uh, 10, uh, we just got the uh, exterior view. We got uh, the Earth in the center of the screen, and uh, it's uh, a little bit different orientation this time. We see the North Pole up in the uh, northeast, uh, about the 2 o'clock position on our screen now. Yeah, he'll rotate the camera over a little bit. He was just uh, tilting it for ease of handling here. He's rotated it back now, Charlie. Roger. Uh, 10, Houston. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, Tom. Uh, on this water bag, uh, the only thing we can suggest is, is uh, fill the bag up completely full and then spin. And then if, if you got uh, need more water, fill it up again and then spin. And try it till it's completely full and then maybe slowly kneading that bubble up to the top. And uh, if that doesn't work, then our only suggestion is uh, going to the uh, fruit uh, juice bag and... Uh, or food bag and uh, filling it up and then uh, spinning it till you get a big bubble and then uh, kneading it up to the top where the food board is and then uh, uh, evacuating it that way. All right, so we've tried most of that, but we'll press on here. And again, <laughs> we're all thinking here. If, uh, that's the only problem we got on this mission. We're going to be in great shape. Right, we concur. Yeah, I mean, you can tell what kind of shape we're in when we can talk about things like that. Right. Hey, uh, it, oh, it, Charlie, one thing, I want to jump Yeah, Charlie, you want to jump in there? Go ahead, uh, 10. It appears just, uh... You like to talk a lot, Charlie. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Hey, hey, let, hey, this time delay, I think, is uh, giving us some problem. Uh, uh, if you just keep talking when you hear me, uh, you still downlink in and I'm still receiving you, so if, if I interrupt you, I'll just uh, stop talking if uh, you start or when I'm talking over. Okay, real good, uh, Charlie. We'll, we'll try to be more observant on that. And uh, again, uh, you might give us a time that when you want us to start the VTC mode again. And uh, also, I just want to check if the color still looking pretty good on the TV. All right, uh, we thought it was uh, real good uh, here. Uh, Ten, uh, the uh, it was the the, uh, the earth, the interior. It uh, in. Uh, hold on. Uh, back with you, Ten. The uh, the interior shots uh, in some of the darker portion of the spacecraft looked a little dull. However, when you were in the floodlights, uh, everything was uh, uh, real fine. Uh, the exterior was uh, uh, very good. We thought uh, the whites and the blues and uh, the uh, the earth was fine. And 
Uh, we think the colors are real good. Everybody's real pleased uh, with the uh, operation of the camera. Over. Okay, real good. And uh, the main thing too, I'm hoping that from the resolution that we have and have on the device, that when we get around the moon tomorrow, you should show you some uh, real good uh, terrain features with the resolution we have at the instrument. But we're looking forward to that. Uh, we think we'll be in pretty good shape. And we'll come up with a PTC uh, time for you momentarily. Charlie, were the, uh, were the pictures that we shot over uh, Straits of Gibraltar and the ones where we picked up uh, South and North America over the, uh, in the whole Atlantic uh, through Madrid, did they get played back to you? Uh, we haven't seen them yet. Uh, the ones from Madrid will take 30 hours for us to get get those. Uh, the Goldstone, we're going to play back uh, shortly, then. Okay, I guess uh, I guess we're at about the distance where uh, the resolution of the camera doesn't really give you a chance to look at the uh, Earth too closely. Uh, uh, so uh, I guess we're we'll probably uh, wait till we get on back to get any good Earth pictures. Uh, Roger, the colors are still brilliant, but the the resolution is uh, is fairly marginal now. You really have to have a map in front of you to uh, pick out what you're describing. Hello, Apollo 10, uh, Houston. Uh, you can initiate the PTC uh, at your uh, convenience uh, with the same procedure as uh, utilized last night. Over. Okay, we're going to go ahead now and start to pick it up. This is Apollo Control at 54 hours, 8 minutes. That TV transmission that was recorded at Goldstone uh, several hours ago will be uh, transmitted to Houston and released at 6 p.m. Central Daylight Time, about two minutes from now. Duration is four minutes, 47 seconds. While we are feeding uh, that playback of the television, we will record any live audio transmissions from the spacecraft and play those back after the television transmission. Uh, can you pick out the Amazon? 
16 minutes. Apollo 10 is 176,221 miles from Earth. Its velocity is 3,377 feet per second. We're getting ready for a change of shift here in the control center. Shifts will change at 6.30 Central Daylight Time. We're estimating the change of shift news briefing for 7 p.m. We have about 40 seconds worth of tape uh, accumulated during the uh, feed of the television from uh, Goldstone. We'll play that for you now. Houston, uh, this is Apollo 10. Is that procedure uh, still set for today? Do you, when we disable the C&D jet, do we disable the C&D, the C roll jets also? Uh, stand by. Uh, that's affirmative, uh, Tim. We want you to disable all jets on quads uh, C and D. Roger, they're disabled. Copy. Okay, the clock has started, and after 20 minutes, uh, we'll go ahead and start the procedure. Roger. Right. Thank you. 